Um, economics teaches about money theory, not political parties. Okay, but like also like that is political at its very core. It is political. Economics and is so political. Modern monetary theory, I think, is pr improperly named. All right, modern monetary theory is improperly named. Okay, in my opinion, um, because the truth is, a, it's how money has always worked. Right, literally, modern monetary theory has how every t type of like physical currency has operated since the beginning of time. Um, Keynesian economics is one way of explaining it because like at least John Maynard Keynes like um, at least John Maynard Keynes like admitted like yeah this is just kind of like what I've discovered how money actually works as opposed to saying like I'm inventing this new way for money to work. Um, but so modern monetary theory is, in my opinion, improperly named. Because, like, okay, chat, what are taxes for? What do taxes do? What is the purpose of taxes? Well, what exactly is the purpose of taxation? Nope, that's not true, Leaping Larry. It is not actually to service debt. It's not even necessarily to regulate money. Yeah. Boom. Bama Raider got it. Gives a classic Mandragon got it. Right there. Okay. The purpose of taxation is to give money value. It is to create demand for a currency. Because you have to give us this currency. So you're going to be out here trying to acquire said currency. That is exactly it. That is what gives money its value. The fact that you have to pay your taxes is what gives money value. Otherwise, money has no value, right? That's the whole purpose of taxation. Now, chat, what is the limit of money creation? What is the limit of money creation? How much money can a country create? All right, so some people are saying unlimited, but however, it's it is and it isn't. So basically, you can create as much money as you want without creating inflation, so long as that money leads to increased productivity, right? So as long as that money leads to increased productivity, right? So let's math this out, okay? Let's math this out. Your then theoretical limit is 100% employment. That's the theoretical limit of money creation is 100% employment across the country. Which you're never going to get under capitalism. Which you're never going to get under capitalism. Now, you can also create money that's less than that and still cause inflation by putting more money into areas that won't increase employment right that's when you're going to get inflation is when money is being created for things that don't actually lead to increases in productivity that is what is going to lead to inflation right does that track okay so inflation is fundamentally the result of government policy right inflation is directly the result of government policy that puts the hands that puts money into the hands of rich people as opposed to poor people. Because, because they don't do anything with their money. Exactly. When you give poor people money, that increases demand because they will go spend money. So that will not cause inflation. Giving money to poor people will never cause inflation because it increases demand. It increases aggregate demand. Giving money to rich people, though, will cause inflation because what happens is, what is money gaining or losing value against? Well, mostly capital assets, right? Capital assets, which means that like, if you're rich, you are going to say, do I want to keep this money in cash or do I want to spend it on stocks and bonds, right? Well, if they have lots and lots of cash, they will put more money into stocks and bonds mm -hmm. and that will devalue money and increase the value of stocks and bonds, right? It will decrease the value of money. It will increase the value of stocks and bonds, right? Boom. That is fundamentally how inflation works. Now, there's another type of inflation, which is the inflation of the cost of consumer goods. Mm -hmm. Now, that most of the time is fake. 
That yeah. is manufactured by companies just scalping and gouging and squeezing people more and more. Which That's, they do a lot of. Yeah. Oh my god. It insane. is not something that is organic to the system, nor is it something, um, nor is it something that, like, uh, it just happens like that's something that's very very intentional right that's something that has to be very very intentional um of them trying to increase profit margins which can be nerfed you can actually prevent that type of inflation by increasing taxes on giant corporations because corporations have more ability to cause inflation like that when their taxes are low because mm -hmm. they have less of a demand for cash if you increase their demand for cash by increasing the taxes that they have to pay then all of a sudden they have to focus more on cash flow the more they have to focus on cash flow the more they actually have to respond to where the market actually is capable of handling them which means they will have to lower prices in order to move products to keep cash flow going to service their taxes, right? So if you increase taxes on the rich and you increase taxes on corporation, you will actually decrease inflation on two fronts, right? You'll decrease inflation relative to um, uh, the stocks and bonds, and you'll also decrease inflation regarding their products, right? Or we could just wait for it to trickle down. <laughs> Oh my God. Does that track chat? Is everybody picking up on what I'm putting down? <laughs>